Welcome back to Felicity Was Here. I'm Heather. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dr. Joe. And today we're discussing Felicity Season 1, Episode 9, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, ladies! Happy Yay! Thanksgiving! As I said last week, this is one of my top favorite episodes. Top five, top three, maybe. I don't know. It might be the number one in my book, but it's... I'm, For the whole series? Maybe. Maybe. Wow. Yeah. It's a really good episode. Yeah, it's solid. Definitely. Yeah. I liked it more this time I watched it than I ever yeah. have before. <laughs> well, it's like coming off of the last few episodes, which are so like sad and serious... We needed this this feel good one, so definitely sure. a vibe shift, and it's appreciated. So buckle up, we're gonna have like a three hour podcast today talking about all the. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, hopefully, I'll try and I'll try yeah. and contain it. <laughs> yeah, I'll try and not go too far. But last week we observed the fallout from Julie's sexual assault. Felicity, Noel, and Ben all tried to help Julie in their own ways, and she did ultimately decide to file a report with the university about Zach. And she spoke with a healthcare professional. So props to her for getting some help. And therefore, Pink Guy left University of New York. Bye bye. He's gone. We never get to see his face again. That's right. That's something to be thankful for right there. Exactly. <laughs> and so, as we said, this week is Thanksgiving. Felicity decides to stay in New York with Jubilee for the holiday. But guess who else is coming to dinner? Noel's long distance girlfriend, Hannah. And meanwhile, both Elena and Ben are trying to deal with going home for the holidays. And as luck has it, we just get this perfect episode where everyone ends up together for the holidays. So get your turkeys ready for our first Friendsgiving with Felicity. And this episode, like I said, one of my top favorites. It gives me all the things that I want in a holiday episode. We get some funny shenanigans. There's some romance. There's colorful characters that are coming together and bonding. And I just love it so much. But before we dive into the full episode, did you both go home for Thanksgiving like freshman year of college? Did you stay at school? I honestly can't remember. Oh, really? <laughs> I have no idea if I did or not. <laughs> my college was only 45 minutes away from my parents' house. So, yes, I did go home. Yeah. Mine was an hour and a half, <laughs> I guess, away, an hour and 45 minutes. So, yeah, I would usually go home for every holiday. I don't think I started doing Friendsgivings until later on in adulthood, and I moved a lot farther away from home, and so it made it harder mm -hmm. to do back-to-back -back holidays flying home. It got expensive quick. I was going to say, I've never done a Friendsgiving before. Oh. What? I know. <laughs> that just means I you, am. like, I'm like that just means you, like, have people to spend holidays a functional with. functional family. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like a lot of times, like, friends will do a Friendsgiving, like, the day before uh, oh. earlier in the week, but... No, none of my friends do that that live here. You got to host it at your house and make it happen then, probably. Damn. Okay. You got to be the change you want to see. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> next year. Too soon now. What do you take a whole year to plan that. <laughs> what What are you all doing for Thanksgiving this week? Not a damn thing. Mm. <laughs> just, just driving the 30 minutes to my parents' house. <laughs> yeah. I'm working most of the week. I Honestly, I cooked stuffing last night. Mm. And I started eating. I said, I'm going to start Thanksgiving right now. So you, you did the, the Sean, part. you did the Sean method then. You're like, let's, yeah. <laughs> let's eat a lot before then. And then you can have more room for turkey. <laughs> I just want to just celebrate on my own terms. I got to do my thing. So I started, I got some pies and I got the stuffing. I'm going to make some meatloaf. Like Ooh. all of this is going to be vegetarian. So it's uh, impossible meat meatloaf. And I made some light life sausage stuffing. Not a tofurkey? No, I tried tofurkey stuff once before, and it wasn't amazing. Topped so. with smoothies? No. <laughs> yeah, that probably would have made it made it work, but I didn't have any smoothies, so it, it was a flop. <laughs> Heather, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Well, my sister's, uh, she lives close to me, and, and yeah, we're both going to go home and fly home for Christmas, so this Thanksgiving we're going to spend it together. So it's going to be me, my sister, brother-in-law, yes. and my baby niece, and then they might invite, you know, another local person. But yeah, so it'll be a little small, but it'll be nice. So some yeah, family. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, regardless of what all of us did in college for Thanksgiving, I think this episode perfectly encapsulates like how friends really can become your chosen family, whether it's for Thanksgiving or not. But, you know, there are others who agree with me here on this episode. So the New York Times recently named this episode one of the 10 best Felicity episodes. And in 2015, Queen Carrie Russell herself 
said during an Entertainment Weekly interview that this is her favorite Felicity episode. So in my opinion, this is wow. required viewing for mm-hmm. Felicity fans or folks who are watching for the first time now. Very cool. Awesome. And for her to say that so many years later, right? That's pretty cool. She yeah. still thinks highly of it. And another little fun fact about the episode, we obviously get to meet Hannah, Noel's long distance girlfriend, for the first time. And she is played by a very young Jennifer Garner. If you're a longtime Felicity fan, you probably already know some of these fun facts, but she would go on to star in J.J. Abrams' other TV show, hit TV show, Alias. Melissa, I know you and I both watched this show. Mm -hmm. Joe, did you watch Alias back in the day? I didn't. I have not seen an episode. And every time I see this trivia about it, I think I have to watch it. And Mm -hmm. I told my husband today. So I think it's it's on the watch list. Maybe it'll happen this week. Our our next podcast will be Sydney was here. Sydney Bristow was here. (laughs) Or was she? Oh, (laughs) I'll have to find out what that means. (laughs) But it's actually funny. According to co-creator Matt Reeves, it was apparently an idea for Alias came from Felicity. They were brainstorming in the Felicity writer's room on what to do next for the characters. It might have been like season three or four already. So they were like, okay, she's been, you know, with this person, with that person. We've done all these things already. What do we do next on the show? And J.J. Abrams just kind of throws out there like, well, what if she was just a secret agent in the CIA all along? And that was the big reveal at the end of the show. And everyone was like, what? Wait, that'd be crazy. And he's like, no, I'm serious. And I think he kept thinking on it. He's like, no, sorry, never mind. That's going to be the next pilot. And so that turned into the alias pilot. So Dr. Joe, you don't know this, but essentially she gets recruited like on the college campus, I think, to be a spy for the CIA. And that's the whole beginning of of alias. So I just thought that was I, I knew that he created alias as well and that Jennifer Garner followed him there. But I didn't know that the idea came from Felicity. <laughs> that's super cool. I'm definitely going to check it out. It's a good show. Yeah. At least in the beginning. <laughs> That's true. I don't know if I ever finished it. I don't think I did. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't remember how many seasons Somebody's got ran. some homework to do. Yeah. And then if you're a fan of pop culture and hot goss, you'll probably know this already too, but Scott Foley and Jennifer Garner, while filming this, actually met in real life and started dating and they ended up getting married. Unfortunately, then they also got divorced. But I do think that they have really good chemistry on this show. Even though it's the first time we're seeing Hannah, I feel like they, I believed that they already knew each other a long time. Like, I think they had a really good chemistry on the show. I mean, he was pretty good looking this episode up, too. I'll give you that. Oh, yeah. That didn't hurt the chemistry factor. Yeah. And she's beautiful, you know, and super mm-hmm. sweet and smart. So, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. That's a nice pairing. <laughs> well, this episode is packed. And it's also much more fast paced than the other episodes. There was a ton of dialogue and scenes I feel like changed over really quickly. So let's go ahead and dig in. So we open at Dean and DeLuca. We're back with Javier and he's telling Felicity about his plans for Thanksgiving. He's telling her that apparently like he doesn't like no-no and his mom's going to put no-no out in the alley behind the house. And he's like, I'm not going to to Thanksgiving if no-no's there. I'm not going to be there. And Felicity's like, so wait, is Nono the dog? And Javier's like, no. Well, that's it. And then he just kind of like walks away. Um, and there is no, no explanation as to who Nono is. <laughs> yeah, it's a mystery, just like Megan's box. We don't know Nono. <laughs> so then Felicity tells Sally, of course, narration, that she had Thanksgiving all planned out. She was going to go home and basically handle her parents with as much grace as possible. But her life never seems to go as planned. And here Julie stops by Dean and DeLuca and orders coffee from her. And Felicity says, how are you doing? With like a really concerned look. And Julie's like, oh my gosh, I'm fine. Everyone keeps asking me if how I'm doing like that as if I'm going to burst into tears. She's like, everyone just, I'm fine. Like, unless I'm actually going to burst into tears, stop asking me that. So, you know, the beginning of this episode, everyone's just kind of asking each other what they're all doing for Thanksgiving. So Julie tells Felicity that she's staying in New York for the holiday, that she's got an ethics paper due and Christmas is so soon anyway. She's not going to be alone. Noel's going to be there. And Hannah's coming. Look about a what? Record scratch? Oh my God. <laughs> Hannah's coming. <laughs> Felicity's like making a latte and like the foaming, milk foam frother thing <laughs> spurts all <laughs> over the place. She's like, wait, what? 
Hannah's coming. She's like, wow, we're actually going to get to meet Hannah, the famous Hannah now. And Julie's like, no, I'll meet Hannah. She gets here the day after you go home. She's like, but I'll give you a full report back. So (laughs) Felicity's surprised. She's intrigued, but also maybe a little jealous here. Maybe a lot of jealous. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. She is, yeah, her interest is piqued for sure. So back at the dorms, everyone's packing up for the holidays. It's very busy and lively at the dorm. And future serial killer Lewis drops by Noel's room. And he goes to say goodbye to him. He's very serious. He's like, I'm departing this womb. I don't even remember what he said. It was very odd. <laughs> but he's basically like, I'll, you know, I'm gonna I'm here to say goodbye, Noel. And I was like, forever? <laughs> Lewis is like, no. Kind of hopeful that he's leaving yeah, forever. Like, is this forever? Hopefully. Uh, no more knives. <laughs> but Lewis is like, no, man, it's for vacation. So he's like, okay, Lewis, I'll see you in five days. <laughs> so they hug goodbye. And meanwhile, Felicity's trying to pack and stuff all her stuff in her suitcase when Noel drops in with a bigger suitcase for her to borrow. And then he also picks up an avocado pit that she wants him to babysit while he's gone. So their exchange is really cute and funny and light. And then she tells him that he can also take his magic eight ball back. And she was using it to help her pack. And then Noel asks the magic eight ball, is Felicity excited about going home? And she responds, Outlook good. And his, you know, the actual result on the Magic 8 Ball was, it is decidedly so. And Noel says, yeah, Outlook good doesn't exist. She's like, yeah, it does. I got it. When, you know, that's why I packed my mock turtleneck. And she's like, see, look, I'll show you. And then she grabs the Magic 8 Ball back and says, is Noel's girlfriend coming to New York? And Noel gets squeamish and uncomfortable right away. And he's like, oh, yeah, that. I I was going to tell you about that. It was just really last minute. And she, you know, turns around and looks at him. She's like, can I just say one thing? He's like, you never say just one thing. She (laughs) says, you can talk to me about Hannah. We're friends, right? And so then, you know, they they keep the magic eight ball gig going. He's like, it is decidedly so. So, yes, they're friends. And she says, you can talk to me about Hannah, even though she can't talk to him about Ben. So I was just thinking that. I was like, (laughs) wasn't there a line drawn where she was not allowed to talk about Ben? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, she follows lines anyway. <laughs> there was an attempted line drawn. Yeah. I mean, she didn't set a line about Hannah, so she's letting him know. Supposedly, yeah. he can talk to her about Hannah. But we always know she doesn't say what she really means sometimes. So Yeah. And it's interesting that he never, we never saw him talk about her much, even before all that line drawing stuff happened. It just, she barely even existed. Yeah, I don't I don't know if he did or didn't or if we just they never showed it to us. It's hard to know. I feel like they would have showed it to us. Why would the writers do yeah. that? Why would they hide those conversations well, and from I, us? I don't think place? he did talk a lot of Yeah, I don't think he did talk a lot about her because when he told her like they had already known each other for a while when he was like, Oh yeah, I have a girlfriend. Weeks, yeah. So And she was quite shook by that. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. It's all good though. I'm not trying to hate on Noel today. No. We we love Noel in this episode. Oh, Mostly. good. I thought I was going to have to fight the good fight in this one. <laughs> oh, no. It's just a friendly conversation. I like, every, I like everyone in this episode. Mm-hmm. So we go to Ben's loft, and he's also packing. But then Sean comes out into the living room in his robe. He's got shaving cream all over his face. And he asks, asks Ben where his razor is. <laughs> and Ben was like, uh, I packed it. He's like, why? He's like, you don't leave till tomorrow. Ben's like, well, it's my razor, so I packed it. Like, what's it to you? So then Sean, you know, just asks when he's leaving. And he's like, yeah, I got to go. I can't go looking around for all this stuff because I have to pick up my airplane ticket to go home. And so then Sean tells him that he's going to this huge thing that his brother throws. And Ben's like, so you've been using my razor this whole time? And Sean replies, and your deodorant. Is that a problem? gross as if it wouldn't be a problem ben's face in that as his response is so funny too just that little 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 smile and a little nod like okay yeah he's also like not surprised he's just like uh of course <laughs> yep. so yeah now we know what their plans are for thanksgiving and now we got to go back to kelvin hall and back with felicity she's looking for noel but she runs into elena and she's got tons and tons of tote bags packed with books on her shoulder. And we find out Elena's going home to see her dad for Thanksgiving. And Felicity's like, wow, 
that's really good of you taking all those books home. Look at like how many do you have in there? And Elena says that she needs all the distraction she can get. And Felicity's still just like really, uh, I guess, feeling bad that she's also not taking all of these books home and doing all that homework over a break. So she's kind of obsessed with all the homework that Elena's taking. But, you know, essentially she's like, hey, have fun with your dad. And Elena responds kind of under her breath. She's like, that would be a first. So now we know Elena's not really looking forward to her Thanksgiving at home with her dad. So then from there, Felicity goes to Julie's room and just kind of knocks and comes in. And we see that Julie is in bed fully under the covers, like all the way above her head. And Felicity's like, what are you doing? And Julie responds, I went home. I'm not here. And so then she eventually pulls the covers down and it shows that she's been crying. So Felicity's like, okay, I can ask you if you're okay now, right? Because you are actually in tears. <laughs> and Julie says, like, I'm really fine. It's just that with everything that happened the past few weeks, she's just not sure what to say to her parents and she's not sure if she's ready to see them. And I was a little confused here because it sounded like she already decided to not go home. So I'm like, well, you're not going to see them, but maybe she's just still thinking about if she should go home or what it'll be like at Christmas. But I was just a little confused there because, yeah, she's not going to see her parents. She's not going to have to tell them yet. But I don't know if anyone else caught that or if I misunderstood something. I think there was maybe just a conflict because she has mentioned before that they work overtime to make her happy. And if she disclosed this, I mean, she's already getting kind of bothered or something, you know, when people keep asking her, are you okay? Are you okay? So I can imagine her parents who when everything's okay, work overtime to make her happy, would go overboard with this to make sure she's okay. So that probably would be overwhelming. So she might not be ready to confront all that yeah. just yet. Well, and we know that's probably the real reason why she doesn't want to go home yet. It's not that she's got an ethics paper due, right? So um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So she's probably still just thinking about all of that. And she then continues to tell Felicity that maybe Felicity was right when she said that she would be lonely if she spent Thanksgiving at the dorms. And she said, yeah, Noel's going to be here, but it's not the same. It's not like having a really good friend here. It's not like having Felicity there. So Felicity tells Sally, she's like, it was pretty much like an easy decision at that point that she called up her parents and told them that she was going to stay in New York for a friend. To which I reply, which friend? She's staying for Noel or Julie? Because she's got this little smile mm -hmm. on her face when she mm -hmm. says, I'm staying for a friend. She doesn't say I'm staying for Julie. So that makes me think she really wants to stay for Noel and, you know, see who Hannah is and what's going on between them. And Julie was a really convenient cover for that. I didn't really get Why that. didn't she I her? didn't think that no, either, but no, I mean, I, that could be like the tier two reason. Yeah. It was just a I think benefit. it's the primary. Mm. <laughs> I'm a little bit cynical. <laughs> about Felicity. <laughs> yes. Yeah. About her. Yeah. I think with the seriousness of what happened to Julie, I do think she sincerely wants to help her friend. I don't think it was for Noel. I think that was just an added benefit of being able to stay. But yeah. I think and Julie laid it on thick. She was like, it's not yeah. like having you here, you yeah. know, not I don't want to say she guilted her, but she was like, oh, it's yeah, it's Noel's here, but it's not you. The best I'm willing to give you guys is a 50 50 split. <laughs> That's as far as I'll go. Harsh. I don't think Julie was the primary reason. I'm just keeping this it real. This is the time for giving thanks and being <laughs> great, being she's gracious. With she's people. got another opportunity to check out Noel, and <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, we'll we'll keep going. We'll see. Yeah. I, I, I'll make a case later. Don't worry. All about right. that. All right. Felicity will make the case for me. I don't have to do anything. Let's just sit back and see it play out. Again, I think it's a tier two. It's a benefit, like Melissa mm -hmm. said. So then they're both waiting for the elevator, discussing the dinner that they're going to make. And Julie says that she's going to make this sweet potato dish that her dad would make. And wouldn't you know it, here out of the elevator come Noel and Hannah. So we get to see Jennifer Garner, Hannah, for the very first time. And Noel bumps into them and he gets all awkward and nervous immediately. And he goes to introduce Julie first. He's like, Hannah, this is Julie. She's one of my advisees. She's from Maine. And, you know, she's like, so yeah, this is Julie. And he kind of ignores Felicity at first. And so then Hannah's like, nice to meet you. And then Noel starts stumbling over his words. He's like, and this is um, 
and he doesn't remember her name in that moment. <laughs> and so Felicity's like, I'm Felicity. And he's like, yeah. And and she comes from, uh, and she's like, she doesn't care where I'm from. She's like, California. <laughs> and Hannah's like, yeah, and I'm from Boston, as if it matters. And just, God, this whole conversation, I love it. So then he's acting crazy, like erratic, stumbling over his words and getting all like flushed. And Hannah's like, did you eat beets? And she tells the girls, he gets a hyper allergic reaction when he eats beets. And this was such a a fun way, I think, of just showing their history together and how much, like, how much she knows about Noel that maybe Felicity mm-hmm. still doesn't know. And so Noel's like, oh, no, I, you know, I didn't have any beets. But he's like, but yeah, so uh, these are some of the kids from the dorm. <laughs> Felicity's face just drops. Wow. She's Isn't so he annoyed. just like... He's just one year older than her, right? Like, I know yeah. he's a RA, but he's only a year older. <laughs> These are the kids that I watch. Well, she she has been pretty immature, so. <laughs> okay. Also, this is a kind of nice callback, him kind of stumbling over and not getting her name out, to when Ben showed up when she was getting her picture taken with that girl. And oh, like, yeah. This is, uh... And she has to Felicity. say Felicity, and she's got that disappointment. Aww. That's kind of a callback to that moment. I wish it, they would have said, like, this is patisserie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll call back to that moment. Patisserie <laughs> Porter. That was <laughs> probably my favorite moment of the entire series. <laughs> it's, so, so, it's up there, though. <laughs> Top three. Your favorite character is the fridge delivery guy. <laughs> yes. Patisserie Porter. So, yeah, Felicity's pissed, which I totally get. If he forgot my name and then called me a kid okay. from the dorm, I'd be pissed, too, at, at that moment. But then Hannah accidentally drops her books or bags and all of these sheets of music fall out and Felicity's like oh wow you know like you you're a musician she's like well I'm a composer it's like oh god that's even worse Ooh, like that's potential. even more impressive <laughs> and she's like yeah I just I have this one piece that I just can't finish so trouble in paradise maybe a little bit of a foreshadowing there and so then Noel asks Julie and Felicity when they're leaving and Felicity says oh no we're staying now and <laughs> He gets, again, really amped up. He's like, wow, that is fantastic, even though it obviously is not fantastic. And Hannah's like, you're sweating. Are you okay? He's like, it's it's the bags. They're heavy. They make me sweat. And so then Felicity tells him, just like, yeah, well, I guess, you know, that means I can take my plant back. And Noel freaks out and starts, like, overcompensating and explaining to Hannah why he would have her planted. Like, oh, well, as her RA, I was I was happy to watch the plant while she leaves. And Hannah's like, are you sure you didn't have beats? He's like, I might have had some beats. <laughs> so then they go to his room and Felicity and Julie get into the elevator. And yeah, like I said, I think I just love the setup here. The beats anecdote shows how well that she knows Noel and that they have a lot of history there. And, and like her dropping the sheets of music show that she's like really impressive and smart and talented. And it's like all stuff that I think Felicity cares about. And would be jealous of, like, when Elena was bringing home all her books, she was like, oh, wow, like, I feel bad. I should be doing that, too. Like, if, I don't know, like, if Noel's girlfriend was a cheerleader or just kind of mediocre, like, I don't think she would have cared as much. But she was like, oh, God, this person's really talented and at this fancy school. And I I thought maybe that made it a little bit worse for her. Yeah, I think it heightened some insecurity. I don't think she was necessarily perceiving Elena in that way. I think she thought it was a little bit odd, maybe, that somebody would bring so many books to be with their family on a holiday. But for this moment, I definitely think she was intimidated by Hannah. Mm. Yeah, I got the Elena thing. She was like, oh, wow, that's really good of you. And she was like, oh, crap. Like, how many do you have there? Which ones? You're like, oh, man, I should be doing that, too. I thought she was just trying to compliment her to kind of normalize it and make it less awkward that somebody would do that, because that is not normal, typical. (laughs) thing to do but for elena it's her norm so she's maybe got she's work to do to validate yeah she's got work to do she put who needs to get that on a on a t-shirt so then in noel's room he and hannah start to get frisky they're making out and they're starting to get undressed but then it kind of fizzles out as quickly as it started and they're like looking at each other awkwardly like oh we're almost naked in front of each other and they kind of like cover themselves up a little bit and he's like oh so are you hungry she's like yeah and then they kind of jump out of the bed and they go get a bite to eat and I always wondered over this scene like are they just awkward because they haven't seen each other in a while or was little Noel having issues which is a sign <laughs> that things are are going wrong or is this just to show us that all is not necessarily well between these two what do you both think 
I don't think little Noel was having okay. issues per se because they didn't even have their pants off yet. Like I don't <laughs> think they would have known that yet. I don't, I do agree that it was know. like awkward and it I don't know it just happened well, so fast. Yeah, yeah. I saw your notes on the episode and I when I was watching the episode I paid close attention to that and. Hannah's eyes did go down. Yeah, they both kind of looked down, but then they like, like yeah. covered themselves up. So it was almost like, oh, yeah. we just realized we're almost naked. It, it was weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if she was like, what's going on? And they just kind of awkwardly said like, yes, I'm hungry. So they could, you know, have an excuse to end that awkwardness. So I don't know. That's the only reason why I brought up Little Noel, because they both looked down. <laughs> yeah, they both glanced down like, what's going on? Like, it's, something's not quite working right here. But clearly, they're not on the same page. So that's an early sign of things to come. But then Felicity and Julie run into Ben as they're coming back from the grocery store, stocking up on all of the food that they need for their dinner. And he's basically had trouble tracking down his plane ticket. And they let him know that they're staying there for the holiday. And Ben was kind of shocked. He's like, here? Like, why? But with all his issues with his parents, I thought he would have, like, understood why someone might want to stay and also liked the idea because, you know, we've heard so much from him that, like, he just wanted to get away. So I thought that was interesting that he was so shocked that they were staying. I can respond to that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm someone who has issues with my parents. And uh, from my perspective, I also I would be confused if I saw people who were, quote unquote, kind of normal and had, quote unquote, normal families. If they were going to stay, I'd be like why like you've got a good place to go to why would you stay like I would understand why I would want to stay but I wouldn't understand why quote-unquote normal functional kind of families would be apart on a holiday gotcha so I think that's why he'd be like yeah why would you want to be here that makes sense and so then Julie says that if his if his ticket thing doesn't work out that he should come to the dinner tomorrow he's like nah nah it'll be fine it'll work out so then we go to Elena who's now at home with her dad and he's showing her some TV thing that he won at work and you know he's flipping through the channels and she's like oh yeah that's cool but then she shows him that she got the second highest score in the class on a test for inorganic chem she got a 94 and she's like oh and the best the best score went to a junior so like this is really impressive and he takes it from her he's like oh wow look at that second highest in the class He's like, wow, that's, you know, that's good. And just kind of hands it back to her. And his attention goes back to the TV and the game shows. And so then Elena's like, well, you know, we got to get to the store. We're going to start cooking for us. And her dad says, basically, like, he made plans for them already. This woman, Evie, invited them over. And so she's, Evie's going to cook for them and is expecting both of them to come over. So in this short scene, it's very clear that he maybe doesn't necessarily know how to connect with her and doesn't pay a lot of attention to what is important to her maybe you know dr joe i'm sure you have other thoughts here on their relationship but it was just very clear that she like you know wanted some validation from him and and she wasn't getting that yeah i don't know what she was expecting because he seems to come from a world that's more like mechanical hands-on type of world um i don't know exactly what he does for work but that's what it sounded like and chemistry, that's that's kind of complicated in a different way than whatever kind of background he has. And I don't think he knows how to be enthusiastic about that. Like, so I don't I mean, you can praise a, a good grade, but I don't know what she was expecting beyond that. Like if he was supposed to be like jump up and down and be like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. Like put it on the fridge or something. Yeah. What questions would he have to ask I about think, that? But I think just more like, wow, I'm really proud of you. That's amazing. He was just like, oh, wow, like a 94 cool yeah it was a lackluster response and just like how are your other class like how are your other classes going like they're just he asked no questions about her life and you know here i think most people would still just like want their parents to be proud of them and like want that acceptance i'm used to getting zero praise from my parents so i'm like what do you expect but that was why i'm like having this issue with this moment but that's the thing most people want it still though like even if they don't know i know i'm not a normal person i can't get my head around that but I, I'm saying she, she's known him her whole, her whole life, presumably, yes. So she would know that he'd probably have that kind of reaction. But yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. you're still going to be disappointed. No matter how much you know the the same thing's going to happen over and over again, yeah, you're still going to be disappointed. But it was kind of like she wasn't very enthusiastic about his satellite either, you know? Like she wasn't necessarily trying to relate to his 
excitement he was trying to show her something too so i think it's it's a mutual disconnection there not just him Hmm. not meeting her needs but she's not really trying to relate to him either it's fair and drawing a blank did they did they say if her mom passed away or what was the story there i'm not sure i I was wondering i was like i think she did oh okay i think in the um later season that's revealed oh okay i couldn't remember that's why i had that in my head now so i think I think she's gone, and maybe that was another reason why she had some issue with spending time with Evie. In addition to, it doesn't sound like they discussed their plans at all. Like, he didn't tell her his plans, and she didn't tell him, mm-hmm. oh, I'm going to yeah. cook. They just so probably the don't communicate. Just, yeah, yeah, it's just poor overall holiday or not. Back with Noel and Hannah, they're now at a diner, and Hannah tells Noel that she has some really exciting news. She has been accepted into the New York Conservatory, and Noel is shocked. (laughs) He's like, wait, what? I didn't even know you applied to this. She's like, I didn't know I'd get in, and apparently they recently had a talk where he told her that it'd be better if they were together, and so then she secretly applied. And, you know, he's surprised and she's like, you don't look happy about this. He's like, no, 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 I'm just I'm catching up. So what does this mean? And and Hannah says, well, that means that, you know, I can transfer to New York next semester. And he's like, wow. And so he's shocked. But apparently he puts his hand on his forehead and she's like, yeah, well, you're doing the thing. You're putting your hand on your forehead. And he's like, that doesn't mean I'm not happy. She's like, no, but it means you're stressed out. So, again, we get this peak that peek into their you know, history together that she knows what his things are when he's stressed out. So he's like, no, 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 it's not you. Like, and she says, we don't have to decide all of this now. You know, he's got his RA stuff that he's got to do. She's like, I'll just sit here. I'll read the voice. We can meet up later. And so he's like, okay, great. You know, we're going to talk about this. And so he leaves, but you can see she's disappointed when, when Noel leaves just at probably his reaction to how everything happened. Does anyone else feel like they really, really tried to, like, beef up how mature she is, like, but to an unbelievable point? Because, like, I know she's supposed to be smart (laughs) and she composes music, but she's also supposed to be a freshman in college. She's, what, 18, 19? And she is, like, going to the New York Conservatory. And I'm just going to sit here and drink my coffee and read the voice. Like, when I was a freshman in college, I was, like, doing shots of Skull Vodka with my friends, Uh like... I wasn't reading a newspaper and drinking coffee in a diner and, like, talking about going to the New York Conservatory. I don't know. I know they're just trying to, like, show how mature and, like, smart she was, but it was a little much, I thought. That was probably intentional because I think they went out of their way to show how immature Felicity was this episode. Yeah, but they made they made Hannah out to be, like, a 40-year-old, like... <laughs> kind of unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, that wasn't totally grounded in reality like some of their other... <laughs> Other character development has been kind of a little bit more grounded. But yeah, she definitely seemed way like kind of like an opposite to Felicity. So it's kind of like, mm-hmm. do you like vanilla or do you like chocolate? Like it's like two like totally different things. But also kind of aspirational. Like I could see when I was younger watching this show, I was probably like, oh, is this what college is? Like you're in mm. New York in a diner drinking <laughs> coffee, reading the voice and you go to a conservatory and compose music. You know, like I could see it as yeah. also being like that's a fantasy of what college yeah. is like joe's like no <laughs> that's not my fantasy no i don't know <laughs> no i know i'm just thinking about how much it was probably done yeah a little bit over the top but i think they did it for the viewer to show the contrast between the two characters mm-hmm. and for felicity's perspective to see like oh my gosh to like, be jealous this is who i'm up against yeah exactly like this mm-hmm. is my competition essentially there's no way i can't meet those standards that's that's out of reach yeah if she was just like a liberal arts major you know, like nothing impressed. She may be like, may not oh, be that's pre-med. it. Yeah. Like, she doesn't even know what she's doing. Exactly. And yeah. This person's got her eye on the prize. She's very like goal oriented. She's getting things done. So composing yeah. music, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's fancy pants. Mm-hmm. So speaking of Felicity back at the dorm, she's pissed and she goes from her room and struts over to Noel's room and bangs on his door. And he's not there. And so she then like slams a post-it on his door that says, give me back my pit. Yeah, this just reeks of immaturity. Like uh-huh. the pit's not an emergency. But you know, I think like, we that's need... just obviously a cover. That's, yeah, like it's the point that, oh my gosh, all of a sudden 
he is not so overly available to her like, like he has seven. like he has been throughout the whole show so far and now she, it's dawned on her like oh my god i'm not the center of his world i can't just go to his room knock on his door and he'll be there right so it's now dawning on her uh-oh <laughs> yeah it feels like those sound like when somebody like you haven't played with a toy for a while and then you see somebody else play with it and now you're like i want to play with that too again that's that's actually my favorite toy ever like it feels really childlike it feels really childish and immature that now all of a sudden she's got this heightened interest in, like yeah like they were friends and she was buzzing around you know, consulting with them all the time but it feels different now because it feels like she can't have him because somebody else has him so now exactly she wants him more yep yeah Side and i mean note. that's kind of gross but whatever <laughs> have fun have fun with your episode <laughs> can we get some merch for our red bubble shop that says give me back my pit just like oh that's a good or, idea you know. yes I'm gonna write that down right now. <laughs> Give me back my pit. Do a little, a little I love drawing it. of a avocado like on a little pit. sticky note. Yeah, and yeah, I love that. That's great. It reminds me of the Noted. Sex in the City episode with the Dizzy. I can't or I'm sorry I can't. Don't hate me. Yeah. Posted note. Burger. Burger. But yeah, she's. Uh, yeah, I just think it's it's funny that since Noel told her that he had a girlfriend, she has not said anything about having feelings for him like she didn't say anything after that it was more just about like she heard about that and was pissed because he you know was revolting or whatever but then since that episode like we've heard that noel still has feelings for her but we never really found out what her feelings were for him so it's interesting presumably she she could have been dating him this whole time because according to heather and noel he was in an open relationship so why wasn't she pursuing him this whole time well that's the thing we just she never that's the thing yeah she like hasn't said anything about being into him never made her feelings known so it's very convenient that now that hannah's here yeah she's like oh they're playing with my toy exactly yeah 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 so that's why i'm kind of like turned off by that Mm. i can see that it doesn't seem as authentic of a relationship or bond there anymore because it's just like it seems furred from jealousy Hmm. and not authentic feelings that's fair okay good (laughs) then back at the loft ben is on the phone with his mom and says that he's been running around trying to find the plane tickets and he couldn't find them and we don't hear her side of the conversation but we basically hear that she forgot and he's like oh wow i i just it's fine it's just i thought you wanted me to come home and he's like you know we all forget stuff it's it's okay i just wish you would have told me because i've been running around all day trying to find this thing so basically yeah ben is not going home for thanksgiving now and sean comes in and throws him a protein bar i'm assuming and he's like here eat as many of these as you can before thanksgiving If you eat constantly before Thanksgiving, your stomach will expand and then you'll have more room for turkey on the day. So that's that's Sean's Thanksgiving hack. If you use that hack, let us know. Let us know how that goes. So then Sean asks him when he's leaving and Ben's like, oh, no, actually, I'm going to stay. I heard about this big thing at Kelvin. And Sean's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I've, you know, I've got that huge blowout. There's like fireworks and everything. It's going to be great. So Ben's like, great. Sounds sounds fun. (laughs) So then back at the dorm in Julie's room, her and Felicity are planning their dinner and Julie's having problems tracking down a free range turkey. But Felicity's like sitting in a chair and kind of daydreaming and twirling her hair. She's all she's she's pressed. She's like, man, Noel was acting weird. And she's like, what is it? What does it mean? And Julie's like, look, we went over this. Noel's just readjusting. Sometimes it's hard. It takes a while to get back on track. And Felicity just keeps harping on. She's like, it's just so strange. Like, I can't just go to Noel's room and knock on the door and have him answer all happy to see me. (laughs) And Julie's like, all right, well, just try him on Monday. So then Julie's just like fed up turkey shopping. She's like, can't find a free range turkey. And it's like, well, duh, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Like, you're not going to find the turkey, but whatever. So she's like, so I'm going to go shopping tomorrow if you can handle prep. And Felicity, again, is just like, oh, man, what if he never looks at me like that ever again? And Julie's like fed up. She's like, oh, my God, stop talking about Noel. She's like, Felicity's like, oh, my God. OK, yes. Yeah, I'll I'll prep you do the shopping. That works. But she's still perturbed about Noel. So, yeah, she's she's stressing. 
I was a little bit disappointed with this because she's just so she gets so sucked into this and so self-absorbed. And I know Julie said, don't keep asking me if I'm OK or not. But she's really not being very present for Julie in the event that Julie did need some support. Like she just kind of threw all that out the window. And the support that Julie needs is finding this turkey at the very least. <laughs> but Felicity's just her head's just in the clouds right now. So that's a little bit disappointing, too, that she yeah. got so, so, so sucked in. And the whole reason she was supposed to stay there was for Julie. According mm-hmm. to you two, but really was it? I mean, look how she's acting. No, I was thinking that too. I was thinking if I had a friend who was recently sexually assaulted and yeah, all that, I wouldn't be talking deal. about like boy drama. Like, oh, why is my crush with his girlfriend? Like, I yeah. I would not talk about that with her yet. If he even is a crush, she still hasn't even like said that. She's right. just Proclaim, perturbed. Yeah. She's just like perturbed mm-hmm. that he's not giving her attention. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah, that does feel kind of icky to me to to see that, like, because she was supposed to stay there for her friend. Mm-hmm. She's not being a very good friend, as usual. <laughs> is that, that like, obsessive part of her person that, like, is that a disorder or is that just... <laughs> no, I I'm just, just curious. 17-year-old girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that's just, just uh... Just one, one track mind. Up, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Believe me, I'd diagnose her if I could. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you already said you couldn't be her therapist, so. (laughs) (laughs) I can make guesses. (laughs) Then in the bathroom, Felicity's washing her face, and as she kind of lifts her head up, Hannah's there next to her and surprises her. She's like, oh, God, you scared me. And Hannah says, yeah, I seem to be having that effect on people lately. So she does her own little vague facebook post they're like oh yeah i'm doing that a lot lately begging for someone to ask her what's wrong but uh hannah asks felicity for moisturizer because she forgot hers and again like just to the writers did this probably again just to make her feel inferior but she hands her zit cream instead (laughs) and felicity's like oh yeah that must have been my roommate here's moisturizer so you never want that kind of embarrassing like we've ever seen is it on felicity's face and please, again, Hannah is 18. She's probably had her fair share of zits, too. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the writers were laying it on thick for us <laughs> this, this episode. And Hannah says, gosh, guys are b- unbelievable, aren't they? They say one thing, but then panic when you call them on it. And so then she tells Felicity that, you know, moving to New York, that her and Noel were talking about moving to New York, but it's getting complicated and Noel is acting weird. And so then Felicity basically just repeats what Julie had said to her just like five minutes ago, that he's just readjusting, that it takes a while to get back on track sometimes. And Hannah seems to appreciate that. So Felicity tells her, like, if it helps at all, like, he talks about you all the time. I was like, lies. <laughs> he does not talk yeah. about her all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice thing to say, which is, you know, she said, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Like, thanks for saying that. Like, I think she knew it wasn't true, but thank you for saying. Yeah, exactly. So Felicity tries to fall asleep, but she's tossing and turning. She's huffing and puffing and she huffs out of bed and starts to walk over to Noel's room. But then midway, she kind of thinks better of it and spins back around toward her room. But then just as she's about to go into her room, he comes out of the elevator at the same time and they just kind of exchange looks. There's a lot of tension in the air. They don't say anything, but then he just eventually kind of looks down and she goes back into her room too. And she's frustrated, like, wait, what What was that? What just happened? And so then she peeks back out of her door and sees him going into his room. So Noel gets into bed with Hannah and basically tells her, let's do it, move to New York. And I think, again, this is a really another good example of that contrast between maturity levels. So he looks like a whole grown up, a whole adult being like, yes, let's do this thing together. You know, like they're in bed together. And it's like, it looks like this serious adult conversation. Meanwhile, Felicity's got like, this oversized shirt, like she's flailing her arms around like a little kid stomping away from his room. Yeah, she, did, she just looks she like did a such child. a good job, though. She was like, Ugh. like, yeah, we we don't have video with the podcast but, around. Oh my god, when her <laughs> when the sleeves were like two times the size of her arms and yeah. she's flopping them back and forth. She did. She was so funny in this. Yeah, episode. it was so silly. I did notice those yeah, sleeves. Just I that remember contrast. that they're so yeah. long, <laughs> so long, so baggy. <laughs> 
And of course, Noel was wearing like a trench coat. So he looked like a 50 year old man just like coming home from work with yeah, a briefcase. A adult. <laughs> yeah. He's living that adult life and she's living little kid stuff. I mean, he's a sophomore. So mature. <laughs> yeah. Then the next day, Felicity is prepping for Thanksgiving in the lobby and Julie comes back from turkey shopping. But she's not exactly sure what she bought. She says they said it was a turkey. So then Felicity <laughs> peeks inside the brown paper bag, kind of peeks in and then jumps back. So like, OK, uh, what is she? She's like. Julie's like, what do you think? She's like, I think it's got fur. Like, just, just, just that. <laughs> Carrie Russell was so funny. We don't really get to see, like, her comedic yeah. chops very much in the show. And this episode, she's just comedy gold. All of her reactions. <laughs> so they're not exactly sure what kind of animal they received for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and Noel and Hannah come out of Noel's room at the same time. And then Hannah says, like, everything looks great. And Julie says, yeah, you guys should come, which Felicity shoots her a look like, what the heck are you doing? Why are you inviting her? But Hannah says that Noel had made them plans, but they're a secret and she doesn't know what they are. And so then Noel's like, oh, well, I, I made reservations at Ye Waverly Inn. <laughs> Hannah says, well, the, Waver the Waverly Inn could be fun, but this could be more homey. And Noel says, it's Ye, Ye Waverly Inn. He's very, very specific. It's Ye Waverly Inn. Actually, uh. Um, I looked this up to see if this restaurant like existed or still exists, and it does still exist, but it stopped being called Ye Waverly Inn in 2006. Now it's just the Waverly Inn, oh, which seems how really dare they? Cool. I know. <laughs> but if you're ever in New it's... York, you can still go to the Waverly Inn, formerly known okay. as Ye Waverly Inn. Next time I'm in New York, I'm gonna have to go visit <laughs> Ye Ye Waverly Inn. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Hannah says, oh, okay, sorry, we can't come. We're going to ye Waverly Inn. <laughs> and then they go shower. And so Felicity turns to Julie and she's like, God, what a jerk. And, you know, Julie's like, remember, like, he's just, yeah, she's like, yeah, I know, readjusting. And this, this, that's the word of the week is readjusting. So they're still trying to figure out what they're going to do about the turkey situation. So they go to Dean and DeLuca to talk to Javier. And they're like, they need some turkey advice. He's like, all right, write this down. He gives them a recipe. He's like, you got to keep this bird moist and you got to take the little gifts out. Like he, Javier's gold in this, in this scene too, talking about the turkey. But they're like, no, actually, we don't have a turkey or an oven. And they want to know from him being in the food and beverage industry, like where they might be able to find one. I'm like, wait a minute. So you don't have an oven. How are you planning on cooking the turkey right. then when you got it? The microwave? <laughs> yeah, were they going to microwave it? Yeah. <laughs> what were they thinking? So a little plot hole there. But Javier says, wait, you're trying to find one like today, the day of Thanksgiving. Like I got mine months ago. So Julie kind of in jest says, okay, well then you bring the turkey, come to dinner. Like we'll take care of everything else. And he's like, and she says, you know, no, I'm just kidding. You don't have to. And he's like, no, really? What, you know, what time? I'm curious. So <laughs> Javier might be coming to Thanksgiving now. <laughs> Then we go back to Elena's dad's house and Elena is packing back up as her dad comes back home. He was out. He picked up wine for Evie's and then got stuck chatting with some friends. And she's disappointed. She's like, where were you all day? Like he was apparently gone all day. And he sees her bags and asks her what's going on. And she tells him that she's going to go back to the dorm. She has work to do. Her computer's there and it's just easier. And... You know, she's like, look, I came home to see you and you've spent the whole time either fixing your TV or hanging out with your friends. And her dad says, you live half an hour away and you haven't been home in months. She's like, yeah, that's right. You know, I live 30 minutes away and the trains go both ways. Like he hasn't even seen where she lives. So, you know, she kind of kisses him on the cheek goodbye and she goes home and it's it's sad. Like, yeah, clearly that neither of them are communicating well. You know, she wants him to take an interest in her life, and he's clearly upset that she hasn't been home more, too. But there's a disconnect there. It's kind of sad. That is sad. And I think about, like, how when I moved into college, my parents helped me move all my stuff in. Like, now I'm thinking about it. She must have had to do all of that alone, like moving her belongings into the dorm if he hasn't seen it. So mm -hmm. it's really sad. Then in Noel's room... Hannah's on his computer because they're going to start looking for apartments for her. And she complains about his internet connection. And 
She says, did I tell you I got a new computer? Apparently, Noel is an Apple fanboy. And he's like, oh, my God, did you get the new iMac? Those are so beautiful. And she says, nope, actually, I got a PC. And apparently this is like the worst thing that someone could do is become a PC person. (laughs) He's like, wait, you're not a Mac person anymore? And she's like, oh, they're really great, blah, blah, blah. So yet again, they're not on the same page anymore. And they've, I guess, grown in different directions because they like different computers now. (laughs) I don't know. Um, yeah my brother actually had a theory about that too because he i got him onto the show because of the podcast he's like okay i'm gonna watch the show so i can listen to your podcast so shout out to omar he had a theory that like noel was kind of like looking for reasons to have conflicts to kind of like almost pick a fight mm-hmm. you know to, mm-hmm. because things were kind of going to the next level with her moving so he was looking for any reason for things to not work out or create some sort of conflict he was just reaching because that's yeah. that's not a big deal I mean, I absolutely hassle Omar all the time about not being an Apple person, but, you know, we're still we're still family. (laughs) I think that makes sense. And also maybe because he's so nervous about or unsure of what to do or if this is a good decision, maybe he's also just noticing every little thing, every little Mm -hmm. flaw or thing that's going wrong. That's a good point. So then as she's searching for apartment listings, he grabs his magic eight ball again. And as she's looking through different neighborhoods, she's like, what do you think of Tribeca? And he asks the magic eight ball and he says, outlook good. And he's like, hey, outlook good. Because earlier, Felicity said that she got outlook good and he did not believe her, but she was right. And Hannah, however, does not like the toy. She's like, can you put that down? Like, I'm trying to find a place to live. Yikes. It was very uncomfortable, (laughs) this conversation. Like, you know, he's got this toy and, like, trying to make things fun. But she is, yeah, I guess more serious. And again, Melissa, you said, you mentioned, like, they're making her seem so mature and adult. And she's like, Mm -hmm. oh, no fun. Like, what does Tribeca? I need a place to live. But it was, (laughs) yeah, there was definitely tension and not the good kind there. Yeah. Of course (laughs) she would live in Tribeca. (laughs) Uh, yeah, I think that was another, though, good contrast, too, with the way that they had their banter, Felicity and Noel, they were kind of speaking in magic eight ball kind of terms back and forth, and it was very playful and light. And then Hannah, yeah, super serious. I I think she was frustrated, though, because she's like trying to have a future with him or trying to create one that's more solid. And he's just goofing around, like not giving her any real advice. I mean, like, how is she going to figure out where to live if he doesn't have some input when he's there on site, you know? So I would have been a little bit frustrated too if I was Hannah, but I think it was a nice contrast to show. Mm -hmm. One's very playful and one is not (laughs) playful. Yeah, I mean, that was like the first time he did that. I probably would have laughed or something. Like if he kept doing Mm -hmm. it for every single listing I brought up, then I'd be like, okay, can we get real here? Like I'm I'm trying to do something. I don't think I would have gotten mad at the first instance of it, but... Well, but you're I right. Like she has she a is... lot of time to fool around because she's not local at all. Like that's the whole point of this. Like sh- they can't. How are they going to easily kind of coordinate this? Like are they going to do this over the phone? Like where they're both looking at a computer when she goes back? Like she's not there for a long, long time for Thanksgiving holiday. I think there's a time crunch there, and he's not. You know, time is of the essence. Like she doesn't have time for him to be blowing it off. Mm. But yeah, she could have lined it up a little bit. Absolutely. Well, if time was of the essence, then she should have told him she applied there in the first place instead of waiting yes. until talking to him in yes, person about yes. it. Yes, I totally agree with that. I think that was really terrible communication on her part because he's like, I didn't even know you applied. Like, yeah, like I wonder how things would have gone differently in their relationship if she had said, hey, I'm going to apply here so I can see if I can be closer to you. I wonder if he would have maybe tried to squish his feelings or squash his feelings mm-hmm. for Felicity a little bit more if he knew that yeah, she's going to be here and we're going to do this thing together. Like, it's not going to be a long distance thing anymore. Like, it's going to be like it was before. I wonder I wonder how their relationship played out if she had communicated more. Yeah, I don't know. And, I mean, we don't know when they had that conversation of Noel saying, like, it'd be better if you were here. Like, maybe it was after the Felicity thing. And he's like, oh, no, I've got to, like, buckle down on her now. Like, maybe I right. should. Re- yeah. So we don't know, like, when it happened. But I would assume that applying for a transfer isn't something that is quick or you know, just done last minute and you yeah, find out in two weeks. Yeah, she plenty so, of time to tell him. Yeah, it feels like she would have done this a while ago, but... Mm. So don't act kind of crazy when he acts kind of shocked and like, oh my gosh, what? You know, she seemed like kind of disappointed, but what did you expect dumping that on him out of nowhere? Mm-hmm. But also, in mm-hmm. defense of Hannah here, let's not have another 
girl following a guy to school. Like, stay at Northwestern, girl. Like, live yeah. your own life. Your you know, like, do your thing. <laughs> Go get it, girl. Yeah, like, oh, we're going to have another girl. Like, she, she's a freshman, so she just got to Northwestern, too. And we're a couple months in, yeah, and now you're going to transfer? Bounce. Come on. Mm-hmm. Just stay at Northwestern. Yeah, why doesn't he go over there? Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's totally true, too. But clearly, they they did not plan this well at all, either of them. <laughs> <laughs> so then at the loft, Ben is getting ready to leave for Kelvin and comes in, and Sean's, you know, eating his protein bars or whatever, and... He's like, wait, is that what you're wearing? And he's like, I mean, it's a party, but come on, Thanksgiving's a holiday. And Ben's like, what? Like, look at you. Like, what are you? You're wearing the same thing. He's like, no, no, no. I was just about to go change myself. He's like, I say, go with a nice shirt and black jeans. Nice contempo casual look. (laughs) You guys remember contempo casual? Vaguely, yes. It was like a wet seal equivalent. Yeah. I mean, it's like really old school. I just, oh, okay. it's like a store. But the, I don't know if he was talking mm-hmm. about the store or if that is or a type style. of fashion. Yeah, but I'm like contempo casual. Oh, my God. It was really funny coming yeah. from Sean, though. Exactly. Yeah, he He's like, if anyone knows fashion, it's me. We've never seen him wear anything nice ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but. Ben's like, all right, you're hassling me. So he decides he's going to go and change. And how. (laughs) So back at Kelvin, Felicity and Julie are cooking. And Felicity's like, oh, shoot, I forgot to tell you the timer's up. And so Julie goes to the microwave and it's her sweet potatoes and they're burning. And she's like, oh, these just aren't like my dad's sweet potatoes. And she's really upset. She like slams down the sweet potatoes and collapses on the couch and... You know, Felicity, again, is like, are you okay? What's going on? Just like, it's not really about the potatoes. Julie says she just wants her parents to walk in here and put their arms around her and just not say anything. So Felicity goes and sits next to her. And Julie tells Felicity that she feels like if she told her parents what happened to her, that they would basically just not look at her the same way again. And she's like, I just don't know. Maybe I'll tell them at Christmas. And Felicity tells her, you should tell them when you're ready to tell them. So they have a nice moment. And that she was solid advice. Yeah, exactly. That was I was really impressed with Felicity. And she was there and for I, her friend yeah. at that time. Yeah, <laughs> she was. I was very happy to see that in that moment. And I will say it is fair that Julie had those concerns that they might look at her differently or, um, you know, have some sort of reaction that was not going to be helpful to her. Um, that crisis center that I mentioned that I worked at before, we had services for significant others of the people who experience sexual assault so like it might be like parents of you know if their child was abused in some way or assaulted in some way so that that's a real thing loved ones sometimes they need their own counseling to cope with it too so that wasn't that wasn't a wild consideration she had that that was very valid yeah and i think we talked a lot last week about all of the reasons that people don't come forward with these crimes. And I think that could definitely be another one. Like you don't want friends and family and everyone to look at you in a different way. I mean, it's one thing to tell your family that, you know, you were robbed, but then telling them about like sex stuff. I mean, maybe there are a lot of families out there where the kids can tell their parents everything and everything about their sex lives. But, you know, I, I just don't see many people being that open. So I think it's an uncomfortable thing to talk about normally. And then when you, you know, turn it into sexual assault, I think it's, yeah, even more uncomfortable to talk about. And I think, yeah, that was a very real moment. So then Hannah comes out of Noel's room and she's buttoning up her jacket and she tells them that she's going to go to the store and asks if they need anything. And then she leaves. And then Noel kind of comes out a few seconds later and Felicity is, you know, trying to cook some things. And I was like, oh, yeah, you were right about Outlook Good. I just got it. She's like, uh-huh. Yep. See? Yep. I know. I was right. <laughs> and she just kind of walks away and continues doing her Thanksgiving cooking thing. And she's avoiding his eye contact. And he tries to keep bonding with her over the Magic 8 ball, but she's not really responding. So then Felicity tells Julie that she's going to go wash some dishes and... Julie tells her, try the men's bathroom. It has a bigger sink. Don't ask me how I know that. I'm like, everyone's going into each other's bathrooms all the time. Elena was in the men's bathroom talking to Noel. Like, Noel was already in the women's bathroom. Like, as if she needs to ask. Everyone's in each other's bathrooms in this school. So then Felicity leaves and Noel's like, oh, crap, she's mad. And Julie tells him, well, you haven't exactly been friendly these last few days. 
And Noel says that basically Felicity and Hannah in the same room, it's like a chemical reaction. He just loses his motor functions. He panics and he's like, I don't know. It just, it doesn't make any sense. And Julie just kind of gives him a look. He's like, oh, it, it, it makes sense, doesn't it? She's like, yeah, it does. <laughs> like, oh yeah, your new crush and your girlfriend. Yeah, in the same room. That makes sense. So he leaves to go follow Felicity and then in walks Ben in his contempo casual look out of the elevator. So hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, absolutely had a spend moment. Oh my gosh. You look good in that like it was like a little leather, coat, leather jacket. It? Yeah. Yeah. Well see, I thought when Sean was telling him he needed to like dress up, like I don't remember seeing him like leave to go change. Like I don't did they show that? See, I was surprised when he walked out of the elevator. I was like, "Ah, he did follow Whoa. Sean's advice." And like, I thought he nice said outfit. something. I thought I just... he said something like, "All right, I'll go change." Or I-, I thought he said something. Okay. But I think it cut to it, and we didn't see it until mm-hmm. the elevator doors open and we revealed. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, it looked good. I'm gonna say though, I think Ben's hottest moment was every single scene he was in in this episode. I'm not even <laughs> gonna hold back at all. He was smiling so much, so yeah. coyly this entire episode. Like mm-hmm. everything that everyone said to him, he had this amazing smile response to it. This it was true. Chef's kiss. I, I Thank was you. drooling the Thank entire you, time. I was like, forget <laughs> about Thanksgiving dinner. I want to eat him up. <laughs> and he shaved again already. He was he was baby faced in this one. Well, he unpacked the razor because yes. he wasn't he going anywhere. <laughs> Got the razor out. So Julie sees him in his contempo casual look and she's like, I thought you were leaving. He's like, nah, yeah, I'm staying. So she was happy, I think, that he was there too. Then in the men's bathroom, Felicity is washing her dishes and Noel comes in and basically asks her if she's going to ignore him forever. And she says, no, but also I'm not ignoring you. I'm just talking to you without looking at you. And she's... Yeah, she's immature. She's going to keep it going. She's pissed. And so, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, sorry about that. And she's like, oh, I thought I was just one of your kids from the dorm. And he's like, yeah, you know, sorry about that. But, you know, she just keeps on going. She's like, am I just an embarrassment to you when your real life comes to town? Just this idiot advisee on your floor. And (laughs) then she finally turns to him and looks at him and tells him that she just hates not being able to talk to him. And he's like, Really? She's like, no, 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 don't get flattered. Like, as far as I'm concerned, your symphony composing girlfriend can move to New York tomorrow. It doesn't bother me. Like, God, she was so classic in this scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's like, and I'm not jealous because, you know, whatever difference does it make now? Like, you and Hannah are, and to get her to shut up, he basically plants another big one on her. And they're, you know, they kind of kiss for a bit and then they separate and then she jumps him and they start making out again. So they're they're going to town and Ben accidentally walks in on them, but they're just too into each other to even notice that he walks in and he like, stares at them like shocked but then like there's a little twitch of like a giggle Mm -hmm. smile thing but then he gets serious again and then leaves and walks out without them seeing so i'm not sure if that was intentional because it could have been like a blooper like he really was like gonna laugh but Uh like then held it in i'm not sure i what do you guys think was that the character actually like kind of giggled but then was like I should be serious. I think it was the character. Really? Okay. Think, yeah, because yeah, he had that little cute, sm- it's his cutesy smirk. smile throughout the episode. Yeah, yeah, like that little smirky, cutesy, coy smile. But why would he, he like be that so quick place. to get rid of it? It was like, hey, hey, oh wait, no, I'm shocked. Like, because like he doesn't want to be spotted. Maybe like yeah. he's got to get the um, hell out of there before he it yeah. spoils the mood. Like, because they're finally, you know, doing their thing, and because he's like off the hook like she's not hounding him anymore obsessed with him like i gotta get out of here before she sees me because then her (laughs) love goggles are gonna get focused on ben again like he's gotta get the hell out of dodge before he gets to tiptoe out of there don't make don't make a a scene run tiptoe though like he's gotta get the hell out i think part of the shock too is like you know he knows that she liked him or likes him so much and is like obsessed with him right and that's got to do something to his ego and make him feel good. And so here's this moment that he's walking in on where he finally sees her caring about someone else. So, like, it shocked him at first, and then it made him smile. And then he probably was like, oh, she's maybe not into me anymore. or I'm not the center of her world anymore. And then he kind of, like, you know, maybe like, brought, oh, she got to get brought out Brought him back down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think he just didn't want to interrupt a private moment because... 
maybe he was a little bit disappointed, but I feel like since he and Julie started connecting at the yeah. previous episode and they were kind of like making eyes smiling at each other a little bit already this episode, like I think it was, I think he would have been more relieved than disappointed. I'll have more to say about this for the next episode. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. Then in the next scene, Felicity is walking out of the bathroom and her hair is shoveled all shit. over the place. She's got like, you know, her floppy arms again walking out. And she's kind of spacing out too. And she bumps into Ben then and asks her, like, have you seen Julie? And she like, doesn't even it doesn't even dawn on her that like he's not really supposed to be there yet (laughs) and he's like i think she went to get plates and so then julie does come out and says well we don't have any i don't think we have enough plates and felicity (laughs) i literally quote this in my head all the time like whenever someone says what should we do i think what should we do (laughs) and then both julie and ben are like whoa like it's okay it's just plates right so he's like it's not that deep. Girl. We got some at the loft. I'll go back and get some. So that's what Ben's going to go off to do. And now Hannah comes back like this is uh, this. This episode is it's a lot going on here. So now Hannah <laughs> comes back and Felicity introduces her to Ben as Noel's girlfriend. Ben's like, really? His girlfriend? OK, like, sure. Why not? I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I just response. saw you make it out with Noel, but whatever. And, you know, he shakes her hand. Sure. I'm catching up here. I'll, I'll go along with that. Yeah. Sure. Sounds good. And same thing here. We don't see Ben being funny and seeing Scott Speedman's comedic chops. And we get to in this scene as well. So I thought he was really funny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Felicity, though, is looking super guilty because Hannah's now back and she just made out with Noel. So she's kind of looking at her feet. And now Javier arrives with a huge turkey and then Elena arrives and basically everyone is surprised to see everyone because no one was supposed to be there. Right. So Felicity then tells Julie, she's like, OK, um, I'm going to go hyperventilate. So she <laughs> leaves because she's freaking out about what just happened with Noel. And Javier asks Julie where the candles are. And Julie doesn't understand what he's saying. And then he's like, candles, like, we can't have dinner without candles. And he's like, and you're going to go get dressed, right? (laughs) And he's like, you look nice, but for basketball. Yeah. And she just kind of giggles and leaves. But so many funny characters in this in this episode. So then back in Noel's room, Noel and Hannah are getting ready to go to dinner. But Hannah says that she doesn't want to go to Yee Waverly Inn anymore, that she's just kind of tired. And so Noel's like, well, we can stay here and eat. And so that's what they decide to do. And I guess in a last ditch effort to salvage the relationship, Hannah says, have you tried the PC? They're really not so bad. And, you know, he makes some kind of offhanded comment back like, oh, yeah, they ripped off the Mac. Of course, they're not that bad now. And So then Hannah's like, are we crazy? Like what we're talking about doing here? And so they sit down to really talk about it. And Hannah divulges that when she went out just now, she went to go make a phone call to a guy at Northwestern that she's been spending time with. And I noticed Noel puts his hand on his forehead. He's stressed out. She tells him, though, that they haven't slept together, like hasn't gotten really serious, but she does like him. And originally she thought it was because she missed him and was lonely and that she would see him and they would make this plan and, you know, everything would be great again. But Noel says, you know, it just doesn't feel right, does it? And he tells her that he's sort of had the same thing. And Hannah's surprised too, but she's like, oh my God, have I met her? And they're like, you know what? Never mind. I don't want to know, which, yeah, smart. You don't want to (laughs) know. But she does say that she still loves him, but just things are different now. And... This is the only reason, Joe, why I'm so adamant about Mm -hmm. the, like, open relationship thing, because she's also been talking with this other guy. Like, yeah, things haven't gotten serious, but, like, she's potentially got this crush, too. So that's the only reason why I was so, like, you know, both him and Hannah are technically exploring other options. So that's the only reason why I've been so adamant that, like, Noel hasn't been cheating or whatever. I mean, I didn't really, I guess, think he was cheating. I I guess it's a moot point because up until this point, Felicity wasn't interested. So it didn't matter if she was in an open relationship or not because she wasn't going for it. And she could have this entire time, but she didn't. One, because she was kind of fixated on Ben for some time. Still, yeah. 
too, like she, I mean, they did have that, that kiss and they had that moment and she didn't pursue it when she very well could have. So, but I think part of that was because he was also saying, yeah, it's complicated. So he wasn't fully invested in being with Felicity either. Like he was trying to, I think, make it work with, with Hannah, but. Yeah. After Boggled, it was just kind of like, this is how things are. It's complicated. I miss my girlfriend and we never really, they never discussed it after. Yeah. Yeah, because part of why he kissed her was because he missed his girlfriend. So mm-hmm. it's like, um, that's not a cute way to start dating somebody. Be like, well, I kissed you because I missed my girlfriend, my yeah. real girlfriend. Want to date? No. Yeah. But now we're seeing Hannah was kind of in the same situation. She had the same feelings. Um, she also thought it was because she missed Noel. But now that she's here with Noel, she's realizing maybe it's just that this has fizzled out. And I guess same yeah. thing with Noel, because now course. he's kissing Felicity in the bathroom, right? So... I thought that this was just a very typical college scenario where you go back on Thanksgiving and you break up with your high school girlfriend or boyfriend because you realize that, you know, you've grown apart or you've just grown in different directions. Yeah. And there's no animosity. It's just, you know, run its course. So yeah. And that's sad. But yeah, no animosity. Yeah. So then Ben goes back to the loft, uh, the loft to get plates, as he said. And who is there but Sean? eating some subs and Ben's like what are you doing here what about the big party and Sean says that he just didn't feel like going to the bash and Ben's like what you were really excited he's like yeah you know I was but then I called my cousin and you know told him I didn't want to go anymore he's like why'd you call your cousin I thought it was your brother throwing the party he's like oh yeah but you know uh, I called my cousin he's like oh but don't worry about it you know like I got all these subs and everything and Ben's like he's just not buying it he's like so there's no party And Sean says that there is a party, but not one that he's invited to, which is sad. Like, yeah, he can be he can be a little overbearing or annoying. Yeah. But like, that's still just sad for someone to be alone on the holidays, especially if it's a brother or other types of family. I mean, we've seen a lot of dysfunction, uh, dysfunctional families now in this episode. So clearly there's something going on there. But yeah, he's like, look, I've got all these sub sandwiches. I'm cool here. And then Ben's like, all right. And he's grabbing his plates and he's about to head out the door and then says, all right, are you coming with me or what? (laughs) That was hot. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. 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 And then Sean's like, is it okay if I go like this? And he's just in a t-shirt and pants. (laughs) And Ben's like, yeah, of course. He's like, okay, cool. Like, get my jacket and all that. So it's like, oh, all that contemporary casual talk. And now Mm -hmm. you don't care about changing. So yeah, (laughs) Sean is, he's a funny one. I thought that was so sweet. Yeah. So then at the dorm, Felicity goes to essentially, I'm guessing, wash her hands before dinner and she hears Hannah crying in the bathroom. And so she goes up to her and she asks her if she's all right. And, you know, Hannah's like, yeah, I will be. And Felicity kind of grabs her some toilet paper as a tissue. And basically she just tells Felicity, you know, that they're sad or things have run their course. But she tells Felicity that Noel's a great guy. And Felicity says, I know. And they exchange a very knowing look because a woman always knows what's <laughs> going on here. Like Hannah knows. <laughs> yeah. And yet Plus all the all the obvious yeah. stuff with like the beats and the like beats the hyper and forgetting her name. Yeah. And oh well, the reason I have her pit is it's like Doth pre- he protests yeah. too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Protests too much. Absolutely. And yet she's still wearing the Ben necklace here. Mm-hmm. For now. Well, it'd be rude not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta have a piece of jewelry on for a holiday. I don't know. It'd be rude to Noel, who she just made out with, but I guess he gave it to her as a friend, so it's a friend Mm -hmm. necklace at this point. But then, after all of this, we get the most beautiful slow motion scene. Beautiful, lit, like, candle lit dinner. They're all sitting down around the table together. The candles are lit. The avocado pit is a centerpiece in the table. (laughs) The sweet potatoes are there and they're cooked. It's just this beautiful resolution of the whole episode. They're all passing dishes around and they're talking and laughing. And, you know, we don't get any more dialogue except for Sally in this scene. And yet it's just there's so much that happens without any dialogue. It's it's an amazing scene. But my one bone to pick is the song. So girl, we haven't dis- we too. haven't discussed this yet, but Felicity was like one of the first shows that had issues getting the rights to the songs that pl- originally played when the show aired. So a lot of the songs on the DVDs, yes, the DVDs, look it up, 
they're different from what was originally on the show. And apparently now with streaming, they've changed all this stuff again. Because the song that they chose for this scene on Hulu is Hot Garbage. Oops. Garbage, garbage, garbage. So like something about angels. I'm like, what? Why do we? Why I are we getting religious here? It, I'm like, what is this? I what is this I hate noise? It. I hate it. So I had to look it up, but apparently back in the day, the original song that played was Bridge Over Troubled Water, which that's a great song. I could see it being great in this scene. Mm -hmm. But like, unless you recorded this episode on a VHS back in the day, like Mm -hmm. it'd be really hard to remember what the OG songs were. So I'm sure that was great in the scene. However, what I've rewatched multiple times was the DVDs. And I really, really loved the song that they had in this scene on the DVD. It's Calling the Moon by Dar Williams. It's like classic contemporary folk from the 90s it was sweet but it was also a little bit somber and i swear it makes me cry every single time i heard it and this scene all of it together was just beautiful so joe i don't know if you remember the songs from before too just the hulu version i just it makes me so sad yeah i like wanted to mute the show and play dar williams on spotify because i just loved that you could have because there wasn't any dialogue true until sally recreate it i could have put the subtitles (laughs) back on for when sally started talking yeah but essentially in this scene julie at first just kind of looks around the table at everyone so we're kind of seeing all these different people i think from her viewpoint in my opinion So we see Ben and Sean are talking together and laughing. And I loved this because it was like, they're your new roommates and now you're friends, right? He's invited him to come to this and they're joking around and laughing. Then we see Noel passes Hannah some rolls and she kind of gives him a bittersweet look too. And he places a hand on her shoulder. And this was beautiful because, you know, Mm -hmm. now they're exes essentially. But again, like it's sad, but they both accept that this has just kind of run its course and just that light touch on the shoulder was so beautiful that might be one of my top null moments for the episode I don't know about hot but it was beautiful (laughs) yeah I I agree I really like that moment and then Noel looks at Felicity after that and they kind of exchange a wistful glance and so to me in that piece was like they're still hopeful for the future that maybe they might turn into something now after this kiss or at least that there are there's a possibility there and then she gorgeous too by the way oh yeah let me insert that like i've been i mean i'll i'll say ben's hot all day every day she She's... looked really pretty and really mature in that moment during mm-hmm. the slow-mo she looked a little bit older she looked less she had lipstick on moment. lipstick they put makeup yeah. makeup on her well it worked mm-hmm. and she wasn't wearing like her collared shirt <laughs> floppy job like, interview oversized <laughs> stuff she had yeah like a fitted tank top and little cardigan yeah she did look more mature you're right So then Felicity kind of turns to Ben on her other side and they smile and they're talking to each other and it's good to see that they're back in a good place again. Mm -hmm. And then this, oh man, this moment, then the elevator doors open and I swear that I get goosebumps every time (laughs) that this part happens in the show. And it's Elena's dad who has hopped on the train to come and see her. And so she gets up and goes over to him and takes him toward her room and you see them hug and I guess reconcile. And we see this, again, kind of from Julie's perspective. She's out of focus, but she's watching them hug. And then she comes into focus and kind of looks down. And essentially, you can tell she's kind of thinking about her own parents and her relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And then we see Javier and Sean interact a little bit over the sweet (laughs) potatoes. Sean's offering them to him and Javier kind of bats them away. He's like, what is that garbage? No, but (laughs) like Javier's now in the mix too. They're both kind of new to the group and they're being welcomed and accepted. And so Elena brings her dad over to the table and they all like with open arms welcome him. They shake his hand. They're introducing themselves. Sean pulls up a chair for him. And it's just, I don't know, now I've been talking for too long but it's just gorgeous this scene and all of these little tiny like what three second five second moments that have happened paint just this beautiful picture yeah it was filmed beautifully and acted beautifully it was it was a great great moment i totally agree with everything you said yeah i'm so glad there was no dialogue and it was just you know watching these moments unfold it was very sweet And then we turn back to Felicity's point of view, who also just kind of takes a step back and observes the scene as we now get Sally's tape back. And Sally tells her that she planned on spending Thanksgiving alone this year, that she thought it would be too hard to celebrate in this new city with new people. 
But then Emmett, the guy she's been dating now, showed up with people from work with all of this food. And Sally says, it's incredible, really. One minute you're standing in this new city with nothing but your suitcase. And then you look around and suddenly you realize you're surrounded by family. And I just think that is so beautiful. Yeah. That this whole episode really is about chosen family and that no matter how dysfunctional things can be with your biological family, like you can always find your people elsewhere and come together. Like they're all so different and they could share this Thanksgiving together. And the only thing missing, though, was Megan. <laughs> I think it yeah, would have been totally too soon. Her absence. That would Maybe. have been too soon for her to join the group. Like, yeah, that's more of a slow, slow burn there. <laughs> but we didn't even get a like, where she's going for Thanksgiving. Like, she just wasn't. Yeah. yeah. She didn't even say, she didn't even storm out without saying a word. She no. just wasn't there at all. She wasn't like, oh, I'm she going just... on a three day rave. Like, we don't, we mm-hmm. just don't know what she did. Mm-hmm. But it, yeah, gorgeous, beautiful episode. 12 out of 10, no notes. I think one of the things, maybe one of the reasons why Megan wasn't featured, uh, all these people in this episode that came together as, you know, this chosen family thing, they all had some significant deep disappointment with their own family. Like, mm-hmm. so you have Javier and his mom and Nono. That's, no, no. There's some discord, but, yeah, <laughs> there's some discord there. Elena and her dad, obviously, he shows up at then, but that disappointment in their relationship status. Ben and his mom, she let him down by forgetting, quote unquote, forgetting who knows if she forgot or forgot. Mm-hmm. you know the plane ticket julian her fears about how her parents are going to react in like a pre-disappointment in them even though they haven't technically let her down you know she's pre-disappointed she's just yeah, sean anxious. With his family. yeah yeah so sean he's he's disappointed in his family because he's not invited anywhere and then the whole nolan hannah thing they're kind of their their relationship has come to an end so like all of these people had these central like really big disappointments with their families so and we don't know megan well enough to see any kind of disappointment Mm -hmm. illustrated so it wouldn't have made sense for her to be there obviously i would have loved to have seen her but i think it was just really interesting that all those people had these really like deep undercurrents of disappointment stuff with their blood family and they all were able to come together and support each other in a different way than than family can sometimes and i feel like we're also kind of finally settling in in the show. Like, I feel like we've had enough character development now mm-hmm. over the last few episodes where the characters are very crystallized. Like, even Sean and Javier, we've learned more about them now in this episode. So it just it felt like maybe Megan, we still haven't learned too much about her and what makes her right. tick. So it's she's like very mysterious. Yeah. Like <laughs> it she would have been yeah, kind of forced. Exactly. Yeah. She's still very mysterious and not necessarily chosen family yet. Like there there's none of that yet. Right. So yeah, that makes sense. And I think even with Javier, I think sometimes we've seen him on the phone arguing with his mom before, like when we're like in episode introductions, like when he's just like casually in the background arguing with his mom. So like that's not a forced thing that he had this issue with his mom either. Yeah. So he still was able to fit into the episode and it still made sense. I might suggest to my family to have a Thanksgiving in the dark with candles next week just to really <laughs> get that cozy vibe going. But yeah. The cozy vibes. <laughs> and the pit. You got to have the pit oh, yeah. in a jar of water. Well, this week we had 15 haze. So we're back up to some some good numbers of haze here. Not our highest, but certainly quite a few. So excited about that. And I... Love the next set of episodes here. The next couple are still exciting and funny, in my opinion, but absolutely love this one. And I'll probably rewatch it again before Thanksgiving (laughs) without having to take notes and count haze. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Just enjoy it. Exactly. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us again this week. Happy Thanksgiving. We hope you have a safe and happy holiday weekend. And you can always come back to the pod if you need a little break from dysfunction. Happy Friendsgiving to Happy those who Friends are Friendsgiving. Just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. And we will see you all again next week. Bye. See you Bye. next week. Felicity Was Here is produced, written, and edited by Heather, Melissa, and Dr. Joe. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Felicity Was Here Pod. If you're enjoying the pod, please leave us a review and help us spread the word. We appreciate you and would love to hear from Felicity superfans like us. So send us your feedback, ask us your burning questions, or just say hey at felicitywashearpod at gmail.com. We may even read your note in a future episode. Talk to you all next week.